Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Yep. Summer's just about here. I've got your summer reading ready to go. And it's an interesting read, factual, in that it was years, three years of research into this book called The Liberal Record, How Liberals Change the World. And we're going to talk about those changes outside of politics compared to conservatives. And even before we get there, let's bring the, let's bring the gentleman who wrote that book on with us. Marcello Brazzi joins us on the show. Uh, welcome. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Very well, very well. And before we even get into some of these things that uh, we want to delve deeper into that are outside of politics, why don't we recap some of the things we've talked about in, in other episodes uh, regarding this book and regarding liberals and the things that you found? Yeah, I think it's important for everybody to have a little bit of a background. I, I think that's one of the problems today. People don't have a good grasp of you know how we got here and things like that. So let me just kind of do a little bit of a review of uh, just things that we've talked about and, and the history a little bit. Uh, first of all, things we've talked about, we've talked about the economy and the data, all the statistics show that the economy has always done better under Democrats, although a lot of people real, don't realize that. Another item we've talked about is health care. And uh, one of the things people should be aware of, but they're not, is that our health care system in the United States is much more expensive and it's not as good, effective, and efficient as mo many most other countries. People don't understand that. Uh, another uh, big item is guns. And, uh, we, you know, we could talk all day about that, but I just want to say one thing, and that is that everybody realizes we have a serious gun problem, not gun, but murder problem, whatever you want to call it. And the only solution, really, really is only one solution to that problem, is that people, it's a, it's a, a strong partisan issue. And we're ne we're, it's never going to go away until people don't vote for Republicans. Republicans are sponsoring, pushing it all the way. So that's the issue there. Now, in summary of all of those things, um, can we can we stop right there? If that if yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on that? Because I'm going to share something with you. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't do politics, but it impacted me. On Monday, I was in Fort Lauderdale, and I left three hours before that mass shooting which took place below my balcony at my hotel. Like, Get out of here. What? Really? Can't make it up. I mean, I've got chills even talking about it. And I, when I sat on my balcony and just took the Memorial Day weekend off, I would look down and at, you know, a couple of shops down there and people would be walking around. And I spent so much time right there. Rita's Ices, uh, you know, ice cream shop, food, the entrance to the hotel, all right there. I leave two hours later, that mass shooting, nine people injured took place. Um, I'm still numb from it. And I think to myself, all right, well, what's the solution? Uh, as I understand it, two different groups got together. That's when the firing started. What is your, your take on situations like that, school situations in terms of, call it gun control? What are your thoughts overall? Uh, I'm not familiar with the details of that shooting. I, I, all I saw was the headlights that people were shot. So I'm not familiar with, you know, the, the individual situations, but, it, you know, we we keep hearing, you know, we, we become numb to this. I mean, we we hear, you know, almost every week that, you know, 10 kids are shot here or 20 people are shot in a, in a mosque or 20, not a mosque, a synagogue, and, or 10 people are shot in a church or in, in a, a meeting or, or on the street, in the nightclubs, all over. And we, we you know, we just become so numb to it that, uh, it's not even on the hit uh, front line, a uh, uh, front page anymore. It's not like on the second, third page. Oh, by the way, you know, ten people were shot in uh, El Segundo last week. You know. Wow. Anyway, again, I'll, let me go back and just state my strong position on this: is that any time there's been any laws, any regulations, anything at all, to um, curtail this problem or stop it or reduce it, anything at all, anything at all. It's always opposed by political uh, issues by Republicans. And 
it's always going to continue forever unless we can stop voting for Republicans. I, I don't, I'm sure all Republicans are, you know, I'm sure they, they understand the problem, but there's a lot of them are just, just never going to change no matter what the problem is. They, you know, so anyway, I, um, that, that's about all I want to say about that. It's just unbelievable. We're the only country in the world that does this. You know, that's part of my thing, you know, is it's the only country in the world that this kind of stuff goes on. There may be there's shootings in other countries once in a while, once a year, once every 10 years, but uh, we we see it almost every day. And I can't believe you were actually there on one. That's amazing. I, let me, well, let me, let me add to that. I have personally, I know friends and people I was associated with, four people that have been shot that were just innocent people. Two of them were jealous lovers. One of them was a mass shooting in Las Vegas. And, you know, so it affects all of us. You know, it affects all of us. And it goes back for decades. Decades. Yeah. 1983, I was on the radio in a hostage ordeal. It was a high school. People were shot. And I was reading the gunman, who was a substitute teacher, his epistle to the world and his song requests and everything else. Uh, and that's how he released after shooting. Nobody was killed. Um, he would release them after I would read what he wanted or play his songs on the radio. This goes back, you know, 40, 50 years. But that that even being said, let's look at schools. Your personal opinion, uh, should there be metal detectors? There's a lot of debate going on about that. <laughs> you know, this is, again, it, there's all kinds of issues. There's uh, the high capacity uh, magazines for guns. There's a high, a high power um, machine guns. There's all these different issues. One issue, they, they should have more doors in the schools. All kinds of miscellaneous different things, you know. And I, I just repeat myself that all of these issues are going to be fought for or against, depending on the party by Republicans and, and I, you can't escape it. I mean, and the Democrats are screwing it up. The Democrats, I blame them almost as much. They don't even bother to make this an issue of political issue. I mean, you know, I, I, you hear political speeches, you hear commentators on the radio and TV. Nobody ever mentions this. They, you know, they talk about all, you know, this, that, whatever. But until I heard, there's one commentator, um, and I can't remember his name, but he's, I think he's down in Texas and he's very popular, a radio host and, and the other things he's written books. and things. He's the only person I've heard that mentions the same thing I'm that I'm mentioning. And that is that we have to not vote for Republicans. That's the bottom line. And that's, that's the only thing that's going to stop it. So anyway, I, I'm going to move on a little bit. Um, just a little bit more background on history of how we got here. Uh, real quick, uh, dem democracy started in Athens, 500 BC, by a guy named Callisthenes. Also in Rome, 500 BC, where the Roman Republic got started. Uh, the Roman Republic lasted until the Eastern Roman Empire crashed in 1453. So it was about 2,000 years. Uh, and we've we've gotten a lot out of the uh, the Roman Empire. We've gotten their language, religion, calendar, uh, legal systems, architecture. So that was an important important part of our history. But now let me go to uh, how that got to to where we are now. Uh, I, I like to refer to and I, I discuss discuss this in the book something I call the four quantum leaps, and these are how uh, humanity has progressed from the you know, the caveman days uh, where we are now. And there was four major steps. Uh, first of all was the ability to speak. And that, believe it or not, is uh, there's a gene called F-O-X-P-2. Uh, and that, if you don't have that gene, you can't speak. And they found a couple in England a few years back. They did not have that gene. And they couldn't speak because they did not have that gene. So when we evolved... When that gene evolved, we developed the ability to speak. To speak, the second major breakthrough was writing, just writing in general, uh, and then the third one was pretty well, maybe the most important, and that was the the invention of printing. That the invention of printing was what we call the information revolution. The whole world started to change right after 1468, 1468. and that's when 
it's just critical to what we're talking about, is that's when the little people in the in general be, started to understand what's really going on in the world. And we the whole liberal movement started from that point forward where we kept slowly, one bit at a time, moving away from the old world of kings and slaves and, you know, paupers and that to a more self-represented government. Uh, people became more liberal, more educated, more informed. And that, uh, that turned, you know, turned our whole society around. The last, the fourth point in uh, the evolution of our communications was the invention of uh, radio frequency transmissions, which we are using right this minute. Uh, so when after radio frequency RF transmissions became uh, uh, useful or then invented, uh, that cha again changed all the whole communications world in our whole society. So uh, there's been four points in the history of humanity where things you know, drastically changed. Uh, because of our ability to communicate. And maybe the most important one was the invention of writing, which really started the ball rolling uh, towards a, a more liberal world. So uh, that's just kind of a quick background I, I wanted to share with everybody to give you kind of a quick overview. Uh, so I'd like to maybe move on if, if unless you have some other questions. Um, no, no I, I appreciate the overview and I'd love to look at conservatives, liberals, and uh, some other points outside of politics, if we could. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we take this stuff for granted, just like all the shootings. We take stuff for granted. We don't realize, uh, you know, how these things happen and what they are and how they affect our lives. And, you know, for example, um, well, one of the big ones is the metric system. Are the system we use today in the United States of America Believe it or not, started in almost a thousand years ago in twelve the year twelve hundred, right around that point in time. And let me just throw this little side point in: the inch they had an inch, and uh, it comes from a Roman word that means one twelve. Uh, the inch was the width of your thumb, how the how wide your thumb is. That was one inch. And <laughs> we're still using that system today. High tech. High tech. <laughs> hey, listen, I can't tell you, uh, Marcello, how many times, you know, I have to measure a room out. And what do I do? I walk the room. I assume my foot's about a foot, give or take, right? At least it, you're, you're in the ballpark. Still doing that if I don't have a tape measure. Or, you know, I could use my phone and some of the, you know, lasers, that, but whatever. It's just easier just to walk it. Well, yeah, let me add a little bit of my experience to that. I'm I'm kind of, on, I do a lot of where I have done a lot of work on cars and houses and construction and stuff like that. And <laughs> it kind of irritate me. When I'd be working on my car, uh, I I was never really sure whether I was needed a metric wrench or, or a, what we call an imperial wrench, you know? Yeah. And what would I do? <laughs> I'd have two sets of tools and I try this one and I try that one and oh that didn't work and I try this one and finally a lot of times I just end up using uh, pliers and grab the goddamn thing. <laughs> exactly. And so frustrating when you're trying you can't see you can't yeah. see the you know the bolt or the nut or whatever you're trying to work on and it's so close because you could be off by a little bit on metrics and it's like yeah. oh it's a metric it's not you know I call it American Imperial whatever it is but so it can be very frustrating. Yeah, that, those those are a couple of the side issues. Let, let me jump ahead to uh, another consequence. Uh, I want to back up a little bit, maybe talk about some other things. But just let me jump ahead to some other consequences. In 1999, uh, we sent a Mars Explorer uh, spacecraft to, the, to the planet Mars in 1999. And the damn thing crashed. Now they're going back and doing the forensics. Why did that thing crash? What happened to it? Believe it or not, it turned out that Northrop was using inches and the other country was using metrics. So when they made the calculations, the numbers in the computer, the, the program thought they were uh, centimeters or meters, whatever. Well, the person who calculated those numbers, they were in inches. So, you know, they're used 
<laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but so that that the, 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 a million multi million dollar program, multi million dollar program, crashed and burned because one country is still stuck on a system that was invented twelve hundred years ago, and, and that we're still using it, and we're crashing space scripts because of it. I, and I'm going to tell you, before, I was going to joke and say, "Oh, let me guess, they couldn't find the right wrench." <laughs> so, by the way, Northrop, um, very, very much part of my life as I was growing up, Northrop Grumman. Mm -hmm. I'm on Long Island. That's mm -hmm. where they were based. Beth oh, Page. Is that right? I didn't know that. Oh my God, that is the hub uh, for Northrop Grumman. As a matter of fact, Grumman now in Beth Page, which is about man, maybe 45 minutes out of New York City, uh, it is now a TV studio. That's what they did with the entire plant that they used. Yeah. To. yeah. And, you know, one quick side note, there's a um, a space museum nearby. And uh, all of this, everything we're talking about um, from the beginning of space is all in that museum. Even actual, you know, lunar landing modules uh, are there as well. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm in California and I came here because I was a spacecraft engineer and there's a lot of aerospace going on out here. And Northrop has a big operation here. And until just now, until you told me that, I thought this is the Northrop main uh, office and the main operation. Wow. And I thought I thought it was all Long Island. Yeah. And, and there were there were different uh, facilities, um, two different ones in two different counties. It was one of the major employers on Long Island, New York, uh, throughout the seventies and the eighties. Big. That that's great. And would you believe that a big com country, a company like Northrop got the inches and the metrics? <laughs> right, exactly. I'm, a, I'm on to just one thing I want to throw to you, uh, and we'll move off of this topic. But I'm curious, based on your background, do you remember Sperry? Yeah. yeah. Sperry Gyroscope Company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They had an impact, too. My dad and two uncles worked for them, and that was on Long Island as well. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't Sperry in Minnesota? I thought no. No, yeah. I mean they might have had a plant there, but uh, major 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 hub was located on Long Island in Nassau County. Yeah. Well, my my job with the Apollo, uh, spacecraft in Apollo was working with gyroscopes, but I don't think we used uh, those. I think we had our own gyroscopes, and we built a guidance system. The guy, they're critical. Gyroscopes are critical to the guidance system. Sure. Uh, one more item on the same topic. In 2006, 26, 2006, uh, we were had a, a spacecraft uh, meet up with and connect to a uh, to a satellite, uh, and they were supposed to connect together and and I don't know what they were going to do, but the same problem. They won the space. The satellite was using one system of metrics, and the spacecraft was using the other system. Again, they crashed. You know the thing. <laughs> Again, multi-million dollar programs are going up in flames just because we got this goofy old system. <laughs> it's really a goofy system from, uh, you know, and that, that causes the problems there. And um, uh, just a couple things that along those in those same lines, it's not just the metrics, not just the uh, centimeters and inches. It's also our temperature. You know, we we measure temperature in Fahrenheit. Most of the world uses Celsius. Well, again, my point, I, I haven't made it yet, but what the point is, is that in all of these areas, the United States has been, has a conservative mentality of avoiding change. Don't do anything different. Don't do anything new. Uh, let's keep doing it the way we've been doing it. We've, this, this, we're, we're, everything's working. Why change anything? Well, the rest of the world is saying this is a better system, or you know, it's a decimal system, and etc. So they're they're more liberal minded and and progressive, and they start using these other systems. Well, we're still stuck on some old technology, old metric systems. Uh, like I said, um, temperatures are. It, why is that? Why why you know? And if you go back to the invention of uh, Fahrenheit and, and Celsius, uh, just briefly, Fahrenheit was invented. By some guy, and he used he incorporated the body temperature, believe it or not, salt water, and something else. <laughs> he came up with this 
32 degrees and, and two, anyway, it's crazy. But then other people, a guy named Celsius, he said, well, this is ridiculous. It was almost like a few years later, really. It was just a matter of a couple of years. And they, they use some more sensible system um, of zero is freezing and 100, uh, zero is boiling, 100 uh, is freezing. So anyway, that, you know, that's another example of why that conservative mentality had just messed us up. Another, we'll give you one more. A time system. In the United States, we use 12 hours times two, 12 to 12 to 12. Most of the world, the military, the medical, uh, lots of other people, they all use a 24-hour system. So you don't get confused when somebody says 8 a.m. or 8, 8, you know, that you know it's 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. If you, you know, if you call it 20 hundred or uh, or eight, eight o'clock. So anyway, again, that's led to a lot of confusion. Sometimes you'll see uh, police reports that say eight, you know, and well, was that 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. Or, or medicine and other things like that. So again, in these different areas, the United States has been behind the, the rest of the world. We're, we've not been progressive and we've been held back. Um, and another you think that's a uh, conservative mentality? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a conservative. I mean, this is the definition. You know, you can you can argue, but the definition we we mentioned this in the past. The definition, uh, and it's very critical. The P, the, the, they've tried to change the meaning of the word liberal and conservative. They've actually changed the meanings, and that that makes no sense at all. Liberal has always meant the same thing in other languages, in other countries, in other times, in other places. The liberal is the, the person, the idea, the philosophy, policy of being open-minded, looking at all the different uh, the aspects of, of things, like, uh, new people, new uh, new uh, systems, new uh, technology, uh, all that, that stuff is, is all, you know, if you're accepting to that and open to that, you're liberal. And if you're someone who's uh, just don't want to change anything and you like the way things have been going uh, and it, it regards anything from slavery to whatever, you know, I mean, that's their, that's, the conservatives are more comfortable with that. You know, they're they they don't want to change anything. In some cases, that might be okay. But I'm I'm just in trying to emphasize the difference in the thinking between the liberal and the conservative thinking. And this is what we're talking about today: the metric system and the temperature and uh, time systems and all that. Uh, other countries have moved forward, and the United States have been held back. Let me once mention one other area, which is a little more controversial. I, some of these things are it's hard to talk about, I guess. They're controversial. And that's in the area of sex. In a lot of countries, they have nude beaches. They have nude, uh, nudity is not a crime. You know, it's not, if, if you're if, if you're nude in a beach or someplace, they're not going to throw you in jail. You know, we're in the United States. Oh my God, they're going to hang you from the knees or nearest tree. Same thing with prostitution. Many, many countries in the world, prostitution is legal. It's regulated. It, it's uh, they have the the people who are working. They call it the uh, sex workers, and they they get inspected. They get um, uh, they have to have a permit, and they have to. Be, it's all under control. There's no problems. So again, you know, we have uh, we spend millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars on law enforcement uh, court cases in um, uh, incarceration all these things you know for something in the area of prostitution that really seriously you got two adults not kids i'm not talking about kids but two adults you know uh mutually consensual and you know what's the problem i mean what <laughs> Anyway, I, I don't. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. But all these things that we're talking about are all in the book. Um, well, you know, I have to tell you, in the moments that we have left, it's an eye opener, especially you know, talking about the the clock system. Um, yeah, it can get confusing. I never even really paid attention, and and no pun intended, gave it some time to think about it. But seriously, you know, 8 p.m. Somebody says, "Yeah, eight o'clock." Well, which one? You know, when you look at it the other way, uh, yeah, meet me at uh, 1500. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess it, um, I think a, a lot of it, aside from the conservative end of it, uh, was just formal, very formal, it was military connected. And maybe there was a reason there too. I don't know. Um, same thing with the temperature, like we were doing our own thing uh, and the metric system as well. 
Uh, we're out of time, but interesting, interesting views. And I'm glad we pivoted away from politics because it does illustrate many different points here today, uh, Marcello. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 lots of these things are not in the um, general knowledge of the general population. And that's the reason I wrote about them. And I, I get people thinking about these things, you know, thinking, oh, yeah, that's right. We don't we don't have the metrics. It's small. Well, that's right. We measure temperature in some goofy thing called Fahrenheit. You can't even spell it. Uh, so, <laughs> so all of these things, I'm just trying to, you know, bring, bring them out, out of the dark and have people give us some thought and, and think about these things. And, uh, I, I, like I started at the beginning, we started a, an information revolution going from the old world of Kings and slaves and, and whatever to a new world where, uh, we have, uh, uh you know, self-government, uh, democracy and all that. So it's all moving in that direction. And the younger generation is much more liberal than the older generation. Today. The Liberal Record is the name of the book. The Liberal Record, How Liberals Change the World. Uh, TheLiberalRecord.com is the website. And take a look at the research. Years of it. Lots of great graphs in there as well. And uh, and testimonials too. Well-received book uh, so far. Michello, Marcello, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Steve. And uh, throw me a three millimeter wrench when you get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on streama.com and onlineradiobox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.